Here we have a Nintendo Switch that came in for no power. Let's read what the customer wrote. The customer mailed this over because he said the ribbon cable connector on the motherboard was damaged while replacing front shell. Everything was working before it opened up. So after reading this, Big Boss disassembled the game console and he was looking for that ribbon cable. He did not find any ripped ribbon cables and that's why you cannot go by what the customer write. Big Boss noticed damage on the LCD connector. Let me show you. This one right here. Now what I did, this connector is new. I replaced that connector. I did not do a video because I have 6,000 videos replacing connectors, LCD connectors on Nintendo Switches. So I replaced the connector and the console is now charging at 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps. 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps is a problem. It has nothing to do with the screen. And before, when we had a charge of 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps, we thought maybe the pins inside the LCD connector are shorting out and that's why we are getting that reading. That's why we went ahead and replaced the connector. But now we are still getting 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps. That's an indication of either a short circuit or a faulty CPU. Based on my experience working on those consoles. Look at this, 12 volts and you cannot see anything. 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps. So that's not good. I have the battery connected and I have the charging cable connected. Let's go ahead and measure components on the board. We're going to go over the board and see if there are signs of liquid damage, signs of corrosion, blown component, discolored component, short circuit. We're going to measure like we always do. We're going to start from the far right. Battery connector goes here, looks good. The Joy-Con connector, you have the BQ charging IC, and we always test in this area for a short. We do not have a short. We do not have a short, no short. And look at this, we have a short circuit right here. That's why you never, ever go by what the customer tells you. You do your own measurements, you do your own investigation, and then you decide. Customer wants you to think that it's something easy, very simple, ribbon, broken ribbon cable, change it and the job is done, one second. We have a short circuit here, we should not be getting a short circuit reading right here. But let's continue with visual inspection. And of course we are getting 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps, so no reason to believe that we have a problem here. Maybe we can put the brightness a bit down. And if we measure the filter here or the fuse, it's continuous. And we have our M92 chip, which fails on 120% of Nintendo Switches. Just a bad design, but what can you do? We do not have a short circuit anywhere on here, which also tells me that we do not have a short circuit on the P13 chip, which is located on back of the board. Now the short circuit that we got here on the BQ chip is likely related to the max chip that we have here, the 21 max chip, and that chip does not look good. Look at this. It's either a burn mark on it or corrosion or whatever the case may be, but a lot of times I see it. When we have a short circuit here, we have a problem here. That's based on my experience working on those boards, but we're going to find out. Let's continue with visual inspection. SD connector looks good. The backlight connector looks good. Joy-Con connector looks good. Nothing else stands out as being faulty. And like I said, I replaced that connector. And you can check the soldering, the beautiful soldering, the piece of art on this connector. And just look at the pins. Let me zoom in so you can appreciate the artwork. And look at the pins. Look at the soldering on those pins. And if we flip to the other side, so I can show off my soldering skills, because you all know that I solder like Superman, right? Again, somebody's gonna complain about the access solder right here. This happens because of free flowing. 
you do not have control over where solder flows but look at the pins look at each pin actually this one here more solder is on that pin because of the size of that pad so you have nothing on me so the only thing I noticed on the board is this chip here which is directly related to the short that we measured on the board let's flip the board and go over the back zoom out and just look at the quality of the Northridge fix microscope one of the best quality microscopes out there compare and you'll know a lot of imitations out there the way you will know the microscope is ours when you turn it on you will be greeted with the Northridge fix logo for a couple of seconds and then it will open up to a microscope the back looks absolutely clean no signs of liquid corrosion or signs of anything faulty looks good except for this part right here and that's nothing just factory flux from reflowing it's already dry <laughs> all right so what we're going to do is we're going to inject voltage at the short and then we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what's getting hot on the board i worked on an asus vivo work yesterday with a short circuit on the gate of the v-core mosfet and people were asking why didn't you inject voltage and monitor the board under a thermal camera the thing is we do not have it that short and we had like a 0.1 amp draw i tried bumping up the voltage so we can see some sort of heat on the board but amp draw was very minimal and you cannot see anything with a 0.1 amp draw you cannot inject voltage on a partial short you have to have a that short zero ohm short so right now what we're going to do is use our nf that short device the voltage injection tool i went over this in a separate video one of the best voltage injection tools out there and at one point we were not able to get our hands on this device so after a long wait we were able to get our hands on 200 pieces and i think we only have about 40 pieces left so if you did not already buy one you can log in to northwitchfix.com click on shop and you can add whatever you need to the shopping cart order and we almost always ship out same day all items are in stock and we carry everything from soldering station hot air station the charging station that we use and of that short grinding pan original amtec flux braidwick tweezers multimeter probes everything that we use on the bench here we carry and sell in our shop and we stock everything since we got the warehouse our stock increased exponentially so it's simple just log in order and we ship to you it's not rocket science and all those who ordered from us you know how fast we ship if you've ordered from us before leave it down in the comments did you get the shipment fast how are the items everything that we sell we use on the bench on our bench whether it's me or big boss let's go ahead and inject voltage right here and if you notice the end of that short voltage injection tool comes with a short lead so I have an extension from ground all the way to the board to the USB-C connector and I'm using a multimeter probe a long one to connect to my positive and now I can inject voltage on that shorted component so we're going to inject voltage right here or right here and i'm not able to inject voltage we did measure for a short before but i'm not able to inject voltage and zero amps are being drawn by this component what if i touch both leads we do have an amp draw now but if i go like this i'm not seeing an amp draw what's going on we just measured for a short 
That's my joy again. And if we measure in ohms mode, we have a 10 ohm reading, which is very low. So since we are not measuring at that short, like what happened with yesterday's laptop, we're not able to inject voltage. And for that reason, we're not going to be able to monitor the board under a thermal camera. We have a 10 ohm partial short. What if we try to bump up voltage? Zero amps. It doesn't matter if we go up to 3 volts, 4 volts, 1,000 volts. We're going to have zero amps because of the partial short. So what do we do? Is it the BQ chip that's faulty? Or is it the MAX21 chip that's faulty? My gut feelings tells me it's the MAX21 because of the way it's discolored. You can see the discoloration and that's probably because of a short or a burn. It released some smoke and that's why it looks like this. Honestly, it's rare for a BQ chip to fail. It does fail and I've done a lot of videos where the BQ chip failed. But I would go for the Max21 chip. I would start with this chip. I see a bulge on that chip. Maybe we can clean it a bit so we can see better with this super clean swab. And we see, we see the chip took its clothes off. Look at this. You can see the thighs. Let's remove the chip. We'll go for this one. And if this does not solve the problem, then we're going to replace the BQ chip. But I have a feeling it's this chip. You have to go with what your heart tells you. Sometimes we think with our brains and other times with our heart, which is stronger. Now, we do not want to burn that connector that you see here, so we have to cover it. We're going to cover it like this. And just for the record, the plus sign should be on top here. What is that black stuff? Weird, right? That's probably because of a burn on the chip. It's deteriorating. So that's a very good indication that the chip is not good. All the black debris that you see. But of course, I could be wrong. I'm not a psychic. Because psychics, even when they're right, they are wrong. Who goes to a psychic? A desperate person. Either family issues, wife issues, girlfriend issues, you want to get her back, or health issues, one of the two. And we're going to put a nice big blob on all the pads and call it off for the day. The reason I'm applying leaded solder is so that we can mix it with unleaded and that will make the wicking process a lot easier because we need to wick off solder. We cannot leave those solder balls on the board. We have to wick them off and the wicking process is a lot easier when we mix leaded with unleaded. That lowers the melting temperature. I mention it in almost every video and repetition makes perfect. You know how you practice one time, two times, ten times, thousand times, and you become better? Same thing with talk. When you repeat the same thing over and over, you memorize. The area is tight, and we have to be gentle. 
and hopefully we are on our way to a working switch. We're going to apply just a tiny bit of flux. Just like that. And now we're going to grab the chip. And the plus sign is on the top, right? Just like that. And now the fun part is to align it. We're going to align it like this. Hold it. Hold it for a few seconds and then let go. And I burned my pinky, but that's okay. That's why we have 10 fingers. You burn one, you have spare. Now the chip is gonna shift and move and it's gonna settle in place. And just like it did, and we're going to tap it a tiny bit, like that, and the job is done. We're good. Let it cool down a bit. Awesome. Now we're going to go all the way here to our left, and we're going to measure it. Do we still have a short? Hopefully not. Because if we still have a short, then we have to replace the BQ chip. Maybe both the BQ and Mac chips are gone. Meter in diet mode. And do we still have a short? And we do not, you see? We have a voltage drop of 0 0.3. The board is still hot. Voltage drop will probably go up to 0 0.4. But right now we have 0 0.3 and we do not have a short. And if we measure in resistance mode, we have, we have what? We have 89 kilo ohms and not 10 ohms. Big difference, big difference. Now we're gonna plug the battery in. Our short is gone. We replaced the max chip. We replaced the LCD connector and all we have to do is test. So when I plug the cable, the charging station will start at 12 volts and then it will switch to 9 volts and higher amperage. That's what I love about this station. I know exactly what I'm looking for when I plug the cable. So right now 12 volts at 0 0.4 amps and I want to see it switch. I have something else plugged in here so it's switching to right there. 9 volts at 0 0.6 amps. Okay. Let's wait until it switches to this one. 9 volts at 0 0.6 amps. Awesome. So we got the switch from 12 volts to 9 volts, and that tells me the board is working. That's what I love about this charging station. I know exactly how it behaves when I'm testing a Nintendo Switch. 12 volts, a constant 12 volts is not good. It should switch down to 9 volts, and that's what it did. I'm going to hand over the board to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. Okay, so here's what happened. Let me put you in the loop. Big Boss reassembled the board on the customer screen assembly, which is this one here. 
the purple one. The customer probably bought the purple one because he wanted a purple Nintendo Switch. And Big Boss said that the console was charging at 12 volts. It did not drop down to 9 volts like what happened when I tested. So he changed the battery. That's the customer's battery and that's ours. He changed the battery and now the console is able to charge at 9 volts. So the customer has a faulty battery as well. So then when he plugged the screen cable onto the motherboard, the screen was black. No image showed on the console. So Big Boss rushed inside, he grabbed our screen, and he's gonna test the board on our screen to see if we got an image. If yes, then that means the customer's screen is also faulty. Are we gonna get an image? Yes, you see, look at this, look at this. We got an image. So the customer screen assembly is faulty, the screen connector is faulty, the Mac chip is faulty, and the battery is faulty. What does that mean? That means we're going to charge the customer $6,000 for the fix. We're going to let him know, and we have to get his permission to install our own screen because his is not working. Maybe he wants purple. He doesn't want ours, maybe. I don't know. So the console is working. Everything is good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.